Batiste Blackfeather being on opposite sides. You know, they're both very common picks, but I don't feel like they would let the Batiste go through if they were planning on playing the Blackfeather. All right, well, we'll see if that's going to be the case. What are you expecting in this draft, Sweej? How do you anticipate this one to pan out? Well, TSM has banned Vox every single game, so hopefully they did their homework. Uh, Gangstar's draft has not been as coherent. It's been kind of all over the place. It's been Grump Draw Band, Grace Band, Vox Band, Lyra Band, Glade Band, Baron Band, all over the place, actually. So now they're going to go with a Batiste Band. This actually, in the past eight games, Gangstar's has not banned Batiste. So now TSM is going to go ahead and ban Vox, which is interesting because they have, they have not banned, um, I mean, not banned Grump Draw in a while. They've always been banning Vox. So Grump Draw Band comes out from TSM. Gangstar's will probably pick up the Grace here. And then TSM is probably going to pick up either Baron or Lyra, most likely. Or actually Vox. Vox actually counters Grace. So they're going to probably pick up the Vox here. Yeah, I'm actually not very surprised by the TSM ban on Grump Draw. That's actually, Grump Draw is their most banned hero. Uh, they've banned Grump Draw. This is now their 13th time banning Grump Jaw, so they uh, definitely just prioritize taking that hero off the board. Grace going to come through, but TSM, they're more than happy to pick up this Baron for best Chuck. Yeah, and we've seen what happens when TSM gets Baron for best Chuck. It, it is not times. a pretty sight for your <laughs> opponent. I, I, I mean, where do you even go from here in the draft? Yeah. Surely for Gangstars, you, you're just in trouble yeah, at this TSM's point. Yeah, probably going to ban Idris here or Vox potentially, but I think Idris will probably make the most sense since with Grace, Idris is a hard counter into that Baron. Um, and now Gangstars has to ban Lyra. They have to ban Lyra here because if they don't, TSM's going to pick it up. If they do ban Lyra, TSM will take Kashka. If they ban Kashka, TSM will take Lyra. So TSM has their draft figured out here, I think, from this point. So let's see what Gangstars decides. Yeah, the, I think the Lyra ban would be best, but they're going to ban the Kashka. So now, as you mentioned, Sweetie, they can very easily just go ahead and grab themselves the Lyra. They don't even need to pick it up, though. They can even they can grab you know their jungler like and Black just Feather potentially wait, here. Yeah, just keep the Lyra for the last pick because with Gangstars already having Grace, the chances of Gangstars picking up Lyra are very very slim. That is going to be the Lyra lock Oof. in from TSM. That's going to be supporting that Baron. But we'll see how well the Baron and Lyra can do against the likes of Grace. Obviously, we talked about Grace having a decent matchup into Baron, but whether or not Gangstars can utilize that in this matchup is going to be up in the air. Now, yeah. Gangstars have to finish out They this have roster. to pick someone that can dive onto Baron. So, Black Feather, Weapon Power potentially is good here, or, or CP because he can poke him and, and get onto him. Because Grace wants to go in. Grace's playstyle is to dive in and rush uh, the enemy opponent. So they need to pick something that, that synergizes with Grace's playstyle. So Adage will come on and potentially Glaive here, I think, or Blackfeather. Double heal. Yeah, so it could be a double heal. So I think Blackfeather would make the most sense. Oh, actually, they're going to pick Glaive. Okay. Because, um, actually, because I thought Blackfeather would pick because Xeno plays it so much. So now Glaive is picked, which actually works well, but Glaive isn't that good into Baron because Baron can easily escape a Glaive after Baron with, with his jump jets max. So now I think Blackfeather or Petal could be picked here on the side of TSM. Or if they want to go, they can even try Ozo again, which they played before. They have it's a win with Ozo. Say that. They have yeah. the, they, they're pretty much the only team to pick up the win with the Ozo. As, uh, I mean, at TSM. No. There's not much that they can't pick up a win yeah. with, it feels like, at this <laughs> point. And it's not often that you get to say, oh, Ozo would be a pretty good pick in this competitive composition. But TSM can certainly make whatever they want. Of work. all the heroes they've played, only one hero that they have played they don't have a win with, and that's actually the Gwen. So, that's uh, every other hero <laughs> oh, that they have Kroll. played, they won with Kroll. This will be the TSM's first time on Kroll this season. This well, going to be a fun one. Yeah, once again, TSM pulling out a strange pick to round out the composition. Yeah, I'm not sure about Kroll because Grace can stun him. So, he has to reflex block that Holy Nova. So it could work out. The reason why I said Ozo and Pedal is because they can jump around that Grace Holy Nova. But TSM might make this work out. So Avanci is very good on those actives. Yeah, absolutely. Now we have a couple of replays actually of what happened last time the Baron got let through <laughs> for best Chuck NA. <laughs> Th this guy is terrifying on Baron. Like I, with this composition, can Gangstars stop this exact thing from happening to them? It's going to be tough. I mean, they, they tweeted about wanting to end streaks. How about a 6-0 and streak for Baron, 7-0 and streak for Lyra for Team Solo mid this season? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's some scary statistics that TSM have if you're going up against them. I know there are a lot of Gangstars fans out there that are going to be keeping a close eye on this game. I'm curious to see what they think of this one. So, 
predictions coming into this one. How do we feel the compositions have panned out? H have Gangstar's got a good enough composition to take it to TSM here? Based on draft history, TSM has gone banned Lyra three out of the last six games and just dominated with it. So I think it's TSM is going to win this game. Okay. And numbers don't lie. Seven oh six oh. The Kroll is an unknown factor, but hasn't won yet in VGA. I think this is the time where it picks up its first win. All right. Well, a lot of faith in Von C on this crawl right now. A lot of faith in TSM and in the statistics. But it's time to get on into this one. TSM or Gangstars? Let us know on Twitter. Hashtag Vainglory8. We want to see who you're supporting. But it's time to head into our first North American quarterfinal as a passer to the casters. Thank you very much, Munchables. It's myself, Dalsy, joined by the amazing Brit Excoundrel for this first game of the North American VGA. Week four here at Scoundrel. These are the games that make the most difference towards the challenge battles, which we'll be having next weekend. Yeah, obviously, TSM well out of the uh, breadth of the challenge battles here. Gangstar's feeling pretty safe too, but this game is important for Gangstar's because, you know, if you want to start asserting yourself as closing the gap between North, uh, the North American teams of C9 and TSM, You've got to start here. You've got to beat TSM in this series because there is that gulf. It is opening. TSM seems to be making leaps and bounds every single week, getting better and better in the North American VGA. And it doesn't feel like anyone can catch them. Gangstars have always been the bridesmaid, never the bride when it comes to North American VGA. Maybe it's this time they've caught the bouquet. I'm loving this as well. Von C drafting himself a cruel. I've been wondering, Scoundrel, how long would it take for us to see some competitive cruel? Me and you, we've been seeing a lot of cruel in our solo queue games <laughs> over in Europe. That's a different story. We'll talk about that in a second because Best Chuck's getting ganked by Gangstars. And they're looking for first blood. It's going to go over to Xenotech on his weapon power claim. Last time we saw that, he was at London. He's looking for another kill. Can a Rocky survive? Yes, he Double can. Kill. It's a Double for Xenotech's Weapon Power Glaive. Uh, last performance on that, I think it was an 18-0-1 performance for Xenotech. Goodness me, Xenotech on a carry hero once more. What was in those flowers, Dalsy? I mean, they've just caught some sort of steroid-infused flowers because that was a great start for Gangstars off the bat. And this is kind of what you want to do when you have a Weapon Power Glaive in the jungle against a Baron, especially before you can get, you know, sort of more points into those jump jets. You just want to gank him over and over again. You've got such a strong early combo here. Grace, Blave, Afterburn into the Holy Nova. You've got the Gift of Fire and, Gift, and, and Agent of Wrath as well. So many ways to put pressure on a Baron early here. And I think that's one of the best ways to pressure Best Chuck's Baron, Dalsy, is just by putting pressure on it early. You know, just consistently, consistently gank it. Get loads and loads of ganks in lanes. You're going to take in trouble, though. He is in a little bit of trouble. Should be fine as Veins roams down. Gangstars have been in their gaming house together for quite some time now. A old Gangstars roster with Rekt. It didn't quite have them all in the gaming house. It was Xenotech and Araki sharing a room, but uh, Rekt unfortunately not there. So now with Veins in the mix, you have to think that Team Synergies probably has to be starting to hit all-time high for Gangstars. I believe actually Xenotech only moved in recently. Um, if I remember, I think Port by Ukrainian was saying something along the lines of Xenotech wasn't quite in the house yet, but he was there to be soon. And I think he's um, actually moved in, might have been this week or last. So they've now had some time as a full roster in the, the gaming house. And this could really prove to affect their synergy. You know, they, they are a team when they play at their best. They could probably be any team in North America. And if you have to beat a hurdle to prove that kind of statistic, again, Best Chuck does Ooh. jump out of it though, Dalsy. What a fantastic use of your jump there, the jump jets from Best Chuck, but they're staying in lane. This Adagio is just having all of the, the presence necessary that Araki Zoro can use to start scaling up into the mid game where he's going to be so scary. Gangstars, not only do they have a composition that works very nicely in the early game, the gank potential between the Grace, uh, sorry, the uh, yeah, the Grace and the, uh, the the Glaive together, the dive on top of. But this Adagio, once he hits that alternate current, gets himself some upgraded boots. You just have to fear, I think, TSM's survival chances in these uh, these mid game team fights. So I, I actually think Gangstars do need to continue the momentum that they've gained from the early game here, because the later and later this goes, the easier and easier it is for Flash X to peel and stop plays with his Bright Bulwark. Von C will be scaling up and have the ability to make someone, you know, feel the power of those weakness stacks. And remember, traditionally, Cruel is pretty good into Adagio because you just run at him and reduce his damage output by a huge amounts. 
because of those weakness stacks. So that's traditionally we've always seen Cruel do quite well into Adagio. I want to talk about, wait a second, Flash X. Yeah, a he's in careful. a... I think it's okay here. Best truck has roamed. Maybe Xenotech's in a bit of trouble. They could look to turn this. That's Jump Jet's used aggressively. Xenotech, though, going the other way. Let's talk about the builds. I think we're going to get a second here because it's going to be double weapon power here, Excoundrel, from TSM as they charge into Xenotech. The Holy Nova knocking up on C. Xenotech will go down nonetheless. Vayne's not quite finishing his fountain at this four and a half minute mark. Now, Iraqi in lane. Von C may just look for a dive, depending on how aggressive TSM are looking. Vayne's. Vayne's oh, face checks the bush, and he'll find his he way back to the base. He had a flare in his he infantry. Had a... Yeah, he had Hold a it, as just well, so that we wouldn't see it, Excoundrel. I, I actually don't think this is going to be double weapon power. This is probably going to be tension bow aftershock on the okay. glaive. Uh, sorry, on the cruel. It's something that we've seen quite a lot of on junglers, especially grub jaw, melee, heavy hitting mid game junglers tend to go this sort of tension bow aftershock build. It gives you a lot of on hit burst, and cruel already has a bit of on hit burst in his kit. So just by adding to that, it makes it even more powerful. Cruel's B with this Tension Boat Aftershock build, hits like a truck in the mid game. And that's very, very good for bursting out specific heroes like Adagio. So I'm really interested to see how TSM play these mid game fights. They might in the mid game be more focused on dealing with Iraqi Zoro. As we get towards the later game and Von C starts to fall off with this build, we might see him go, no, wait a second, he's actually gone Swift Shooter. This might actually Breaking be point. double tension. Maybe Storm Crown after that. Like, it feels like the possibility, we've talked about this uh, you know, often on KM before Excalibur about double weapon power. Is it viable in 2.6 considering Bone Saw, Tension Bow seem to be in a fairly good place? You've got a Baron, hardest hitting weapon power carry there is. That's going to be a gank onto Iraqi Zoro, and he's just going to instantly drop. Best Chuck should be good to move away. The fountain keeps him nice and healthy. Veins and Xenotech now under turret. No fountain. The dive potential from a Cruel, from a Lyra, with Best Chuck hitting with that. Uh, Sora Blade, he's already finished. Have to worry, Pink Angst does. Well, a lot of you in Twitch chat and, and VGA viewers probably won't have been watching all of the Challenger series over in Europe, but in Europe we have a team called Calamity Reborn who've just won the VGL uh, Summer Split 1, and they have uh, Leon, who most of you will know, one of the best players in Europe, maybe even one of the best players in the world. You have Aeon and Rhea Ren, also very, very skilled and talented players in their own right. They were the first team I have seen in recent memory to pull out a double weapon power composition and win with it. Um, I, they won with a saw, believe it or not, that sort of went for a bone saw. And they also had a weapon power jungler and it actually worked incredibly well. They had a lance, big on hit lance. Um, so saw reduced the armor and lance basically got massive damage out with his impales and Githian walls. And it worked really well. Um, and we are going to see Von C move to what looks like it's going to be a poison shiv. So we could actually see a double weapon power build here. I would like to potentially see um, bone saw, but realistically with double tension bow, you already have a lot of armor penetration in there anyway. That's 12% flat armor penetration you have regardless. This is really interesting. Very interesting. It's going to be... Dang Star's moving to the lane. I remember talking to one of the European pro players. I can't quite put my name on it, but they were quite upset that Adagio has fallen out of the meta due to one single item alone, Excoundrel. That is the poison ship, especially on Vox. Vox used to be a pretty hard matchup. Um, into the Adagio, you, you used to struggle against Adagio, but since Poison Shiv's come into uh, popularity and Vox can build it, they feel like that's kind of flipped, that the Adagio actually now struggles into the Vox. So, if you can apply that Poison Shiv to the Adagio, get on top of him, then the healing potential is just not quite there. Veins will have to build a Shadow Glass to fill this game. I, I feel like the burst on the Grace, and perhaps even soon, we saw it in Europe, a third item, uh, Shadow Glass from SK. They're starting up this gold miner here. Looks like they should be able to easily Immense secure it. Iron Cannon will come on top of their heads. The Inatech and Veins will take a bit of that, but they're happy to just walk away. And actually, the whole Poison Shift debate in this particular instance is very interesting, actually, Dalsy, because on a Baron, you classically will never go Poison Shift because it's just an item that doesn't really synergize with what Baron wants to achieve. Baron likes high weapon power volumes, big crits, um, anything that basically makes his rockets, which are fairly low attack speed, deal as much damage as physically possible. And against a Grace and a Dagio, a double sustain composition. Ooh, wait a second, what's the plan? Straight into the health from Death from Hell's Hard. Von C under this turret gets so much healing and Dino Tech will go down. Von C just fight, no fear. He's still going. Eventually, Vayne shuts him down, but this will be a turret for TSM. 
Damn, TSM already off to that. And what Cruel provides, Dalsy? Cruel is very strong in the mid game. Cruel has got typically an incredibly strong mid game because he scales so well with levels. When you've got um, a massive le so massive levels in your B, your Spectral Smite, it, it can absolutely crush mid game, even if you have no real attack damage or sorry, even no no real weapon power, because. It has so much damage when it comes from getting those stacks in the Spectral Smite. So TSM are doing a really good job of pressing mid-game advantage with Cruel, finding those engages, a little bit like you would do with a Koshka post-6, just throwing out the Cruel ultimate onto Adagio, rushing the Adagio, who is classically bad, into a Cruel, and then using that as a distraction while Baron deals damage from the backline. I really like the way that TSM are playing this. By sending Cruel immediately into the fight, he warrants a response, because if you leave a Cruel, he is just going to build weakness stacks, he is going to get a big smite, and he's going to kill a target. Just like this, potentially. Xenotech will off. be the focus of Von C. Looks like he should be okay for now. Gangstars are poistering for a re-engage, and Vayne's is going to dive in with Xenotech, but they don't really find the kill they need. Hell's Heart into Xenotech, he gets the heal from Grace, but he's still going down, dropped! Fountain comes out of Vayne's very late, could have perceived his jungler there, but wasn't looking for it. TSM, all very healthy due to Lyra, and Lyra, such a great captain right now, especially into the uh, into the Grace. They're going to go for the Grace. In fact, Veins does pop down that Holy Nova, but holy hell, that's a lot of damage from Best Chuck, and this is very much likely to be TSM finding themselves another, another turret if they keep the siege up. Uh, they are very, very close to running away with the game here, Dalsy. I was about to talk about, I think it, it's illustrated so perfectly in the last few fights that we've seen from TSM. They run what is called in, in my opinion, a distraction tactic. Cruel is a distraction tactic in a Baron composition. Well. I talked about it in a, in a draft video I did recently. When you have a Baron, sometimes it's really nice to draft a strong early mid-game jungler who can pretty much solo carry in, in some instances because it means that Baron becomes less of a, a target, especially in the mid-game. So that gives Baron time to scale in team fights because no one's focusing him. So if you, if you imagine your Gangstars, you have a Cruel running at you, teeth bared, Smites delivered onto your Adagio. What's the what's the Gangstar's response? It's not going to be after burn the Baron and blow the Baron up. I can absolutely assure you that it is going to be get this cruel off me. He hurts. And in that time, because they only really have both the Afterburn and Grace's Holy Nova to peel for the cruel. Hosina Tech is going in. Vonsi's just lurking, waiting. They've used their one heal tool. Veins can't get in position. There's a heal onto Araki Zoro. And there's a fountain as he gets blown up by Best Chuck. Xenotech now looking for the escape, but from Hell's Heart connects, and that will be him stunned and deleted by Von C. Four, two, and five. Best Chuck, five, one, and four. Yeah, this distraction composition, Excoundrel, definitely. Uh, more of a kill you composition in the the mid game for the cruel as he's at his uh, you know elite power spike. Yeah, and actually it's the double edged sword, Dalsy, because if you do just ignore the cruel, he will just kill you. So it's it's a double edged sword of this composition that you can't ignore the cruel, but you have to ignore the cruel, but you can't. So you're in a, it's a catch twenty two for gangsters because you can't ignore the cruel because he'll kill you, but you have to ignore the cruel because then Baron will kill you. I really like this drafting from TSM. Not only is Cruel good into Adagio, like we've talked about, it works so well because it, it requires such an immediate answer that gangstars just don't have. And TSM looking like they are still that untouchable bastion of North American VGA prowess that they have always been. At least I wonder for the past where the reflex year now, Darcy. Down been... draw. What's that, sorry? The reflex blocks, where are they? Xenotech, no reflex yeah. block. Veins, no crucible. Iraqi Zoro has himself a reflex block but i mean i mean what do you, what do you what do you want to reflex block the only thing i think heart, about reflex probably. blocking was the cruel ultimate yeah so iraqi zoro is generally going to be the first target right so he's got the reflex block because that's that's warranted the problem is for the problem is now for the gangsters they want to build armor and they want to build armor quickly but you can't build armor against Baron, and double tension bone makes building armor feel kind of painful because it's still so good against high armor values. When you compare a Sorrow Blade to a tension bow in terms of damage efficiency, at, at Metal Jacket and level 12 values of armor, tension bow almost matches Sorrow Blade. And the more and more weapon power you get, the more the more and more powerful tension bow becomes because of that 12% armor shred. So, yeah, I mean, this is a tough situation for Gangstars right now.
Gangstars, they've attempted to be the aggressor, they, they've attempted to take the fights to TSM. When it happens, Von C just gets an entry point on to Araki Zoro. So they play defensively, and it seems like Von C still finds his entry point. That's going to be Baines perhaps losing his life here. There's the engage, but look at where Von C is. Straight on to Xenotech, and Xenotech starting to lose his life. They can't deal with the Cruel, they can't deal with the Baron, and Don't now they're kill. just losing their lives. A double and ace. an ace comes through for TSM here. Veins with that energy battery, void battery, looks like he's going towards an Echo, but I just don't think that a double heal is going to save any of their carries in this position. You kind of feel like maybe you need the burst heal that a Shadow Glass would provide, but even then, the Cruel, the Baron, they're already dealing too much damage here. Best Chuck, he's at his four damage item spike. He's taken the choke point turret. The Kraken's just spawned, and Gangstars look lost for odds. When will people learn? You don't give best Chuck N.A. Baron. H how many losses to a 715 Baron will it take for people to say, maybe we should ban Baron against best Chuck? Uh, at, what point, at what point does that become part of your draft strategy, Dalsy? Because I feel like a lot of people have let this through. Best Chuck has been so happy to just lock it in with little to no regard for any form of counter. Mm -hmm. And everybody has fell flat to the power. I mean, credit to TSM, they play so well around it. But yeah. Best Chuck's Baron feels unbeatable. When do people realize this? Right. You know, it's it, maybe next update. Who knows? Like... Best Chuck in a tweet to me says, no one counters my Baron. And, you know, even when we've seen counter compositions towards Best Chuck's Baron, TSM have just played so perfectly around those counter compositions and met their win conditions face first at Scoundrel. They've made it look easy every single time. I, I can't remember a, a TSM game with Baron that's looked hard. Here comes another engage from Veins. Good Holy Nova, but it was not on to best Chuck. Xenotech dives in. Xenotech starting to get healed. Can Araki get the damage down? Another jump jet to Fountain. A Crucible, and it's now the Massacre as TSM take down Gangstars. Okay. One, two, and a third. That will be the ace coming through for TSM. The Kraken knocking on the door of Gangstars, and to game two we go. And the Bone Saw came out as well, Dalsy. So they did run the ultimate armor shred composition from TSM, and double weapon power has firmly found its way back into professional play of Vainglory. And TSM widened the gulf between themselves and pretty much any North American VG8 team that you could think to lay your eyes on. C9 have even looked, you know, struggling against them in recent times. TSM are just the complete package. Certainly are. You have to wonder, with Baron being allowed to go through two bans and two picks, will there be an adaptation? We'll find out, guys, as we throw it back to the desk to break down that game. Can you... Can people start banning Baron against Best Chuck? Can that be a thing that happens? <laughs> because every time he gets Baron, he just runs away with the game. And I mean, I, I, you've got to give it to Team Solar Mid, though. They seem to be able to win with anything. Like, the Krull <laughs> ran away with the game as well. Like, it's not like Von C didn't exactly destroy in the jungle. But it was such a smart Krull pick here. The way that TSM played it and made it work, the double weapon with Krull going in, being a distraction, saying, hey, you have to focus this Krull, otherwise these weakness stacks are going to make it so that your carry cannot do any damage. Meanwhile, Baron's just on the back lines destroying people. And by the end of the game, the Krull even got the Bone Saw. So even if armor was going to start getting stacked by Gangstars, it was going to be shredded away by Krull so that Baron could just fire on in and blow people up just like he was doing all game. Yeah, he's able to pretty much do what he wants. And we saw the, the kind of the final fight of the game as well. It felt like if they weren't so far behind, Gangstars could have actually won that fight. They managed to shut down Best Chuck a little bit, but they just fell so far behind so early. Yeah, and Cruel is really good against Adagio and Glaive. He counters Adagio and Glaive uh, 1v1 naturally. That's just how his kit works. Um, and I felt like Grace needed to play a role in terms of keeping Cruel off. Adagio along with Glaive because you can you have two stuns you have the Glaive stun and you have the Holy Nova to stop Cruel from getting onto Adagio and then they should then focus on Baron honestly they should always ignore the Cruel they should not try to fight the Cruel because when they do that they stack on top of each other and Baron is just free to do damage and 
chill from behind, you know, just launching rockets away. So they needed to uh, ignore the crew, honestly. I know it's hard to do when the crew is in your face like that, but ignore the crew, after burn them away, and get onto that Baron somehow. Yeah, they needed to somehow focus down best Chuck NA, but as you rightly say, easier said than done. And we actually have a very interesting statistic. The CS differential between Best Chuck and Araki Zoro in that game. He was up 56 CS by the end of the game. And that yeah. that lead we were watching in the production gallery, it was like inching further and further and further in favor of Best Chuck. So that huge gold lead that they had as a team wasn't just down to the kills. It was also just down to the sheer number of minions he was I mean, to. gold leads are very rarely down to just the kills. It was the... The CS lead and just the objectives being able to ta get taken. I mean, a kill is only worth 200 gold, whereas you know, a turret is worth 900 gold for the team. So it's you, you clear, what is it, five or six minions. That's your 200 gold from a kill. So it's all about the farm and the turrets. TSM knows this. The kills are just bonus for them, essentially. The kills are just a means for TSM to get those other advantages. Yeah, that's just the way of opening the gate and... and well, opening the floodgate, I suppose. <laughs> the, yeah. the gold comes flooding in. But <laughs> yeah, TSM definitely doing a phenomenal job in game one. What do Gangstars have to change then coming into game two? Because it didn't feel like they drafted a bad composition there. Yeah, their draft was just really bad. Um, it's like, why would you give Chuck, Baron, and Lyra? That's that's something that TSM has run multiple times. You know, there's a draft history. You can rewatch the VODs. Um, just ban Baron. Why Batiste? Yeah. Batiste ban did not make any sense to me. Like, TSM has not run like Batiste like very sh like super overly powery po powered I mean <laughs> that was a great <laughs> sentence. <laughs> um, Baron they have ran like OP man like come yeah. on dude ban that Baron or take it away do something but they need to fix their draft for sure. Yeah, the Baron definitely I feel like needs to be a heavier priority. Though. Yeah, I mean, and even to your point about the Batiste like, so they've played the Batiste a lot. Eight games played on the Batiste. TSM has three losses in this season. All three of them were with the Batiste. <laughs> so that's, if there there's one go. thing you're going to be able to beat TSM on, it's the Batiste. Let homework. it through. <laughs> Do your Ban homework. the Baron, which has now <laughs> seven wins. Best Chuck has over half of all of the Baron there wins through is. all of North America. The Baron so finally, Baron. it will be Baron taken <laughs> off the board. Sorry, Chuck, you're done now. No Baron for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Time for Jewel so I think instead. TSM, I think they have picked Lyra over Grace before, but I think it, between those, they may pick Lyra Grace here, but. They might pick the Lyra over the Grace here, so let's see what they decide. Yeah, we'll see what memory TSM is going to bring out in this game. We've had Jewel, we've had Krull, there's plenty of other picks. We, I mean, we've yet to see a Saw in this yep. season. Apparently in the Challenger scene, people have yeah. been doing it. Apparently Leon's a big fan, so <laughs> there's potential Lyra going to be yep, the first Yep, so they do in. take Lyra over Grace. So Gangstars need to take Grace here. If they don't, then TSM is going to ban it away from them. Um, and Grace is not as good as Lyra in early game pre-6, but once level 6, Grace has more utility, I feel. So um, they definitely need to pick up their Grace here, unless they're not comfortable with Veins on Grace. So maybe they may put them on another captain, but they're going to go ahead and pick up that Grace. And now from a ban perspective, if they don't want to play Kashka, they should ban it here or take it, or ban Grumpjaw and take Kashka. But I feel Kashka and Grumpjaw will be the, the big priorities here in this next phase. Still a lot on the board for these guys and gangstars. We'll have the next pick, so they have the pick of the litter. Batiste going to be taken away from this one. I wouldn't have been too surprised to see them let that Batiste through just so they yeah. can pick it up alongside that Grace. Yeah, it would have made a fair bit of sense. You force TSM to set, either let you play that or have to ban it away themselves. Instead, TSM can now ban away the Kashka. There we go. And make sure that that doesn't go through onto Xenotech. Now, Gangstar can pick up Grumpjaw, but picking Grumpjaw here could be dangerous because TSM can play Rhyme into that composition. Um, so this could be a little risky pick here, because but they have to pick Grumpjaw. They can't just give TSM Grumpjaw, unless they can give TSM Grumpjaw and run Rhyme themselves, which might be actually smarter for Gangstar to do here. So they may pick secure Vox. Um, as their carry and then basically pick a last counter pick into that but I feel like Vox would make the most sense he has poison ship he can counter Lyra so uh, hopefully Gangster decides on Vox here it also oh it's, it's banned Vox is banned I'm sorry <laughs> Idris Idris should be the pick here but actually go with Kestrel well, we've seen Iraqi Zoro have a lot of success on that Kestrel in lane. That's something that he was playing a lot earlier in the season. And also, you know, Xenotech, very well known for his CP Kestrel. So it's kind of a flex pick as well for these guys. Yeah, I really enjoy seeing Xenotech get that Kestrel uh, last season. It wasn't his most played, but it was what I felt was his best hero 
in the previous season. Certainly season, one of the so. signature heroes, yeah. right? So we'll see if it is going to come through onto Xenotech once again. But we've, again, we've seen Iraqi Zoro. The game that Gangstars beat TSM was with Iraqi Zoro on the weapon Kestrel. So the the onus is there for them to try and pick up that, uh, have, have the Kestrel be the weapon. Yeah, carry. Samuel, Gwen looks pretty good. Samuel, Idris, if they want to dive onto that Kestrel, look pretty good. Glaive looks pretty good too. Um, but... Glaive into uh, a Grace is going to be a little tougher, but it can be done. But an Afterburn on Kestro is going to completely shut her down. But they're going to go with the Idris, and I think Samuel will probably be picked here, I feel. But that leaves Grumpchow open for Gangstars, so they may do maybe even Grumpchow. But I think Samuel would make the most sense here, or Blackfeather or CP. Um, or they might, Vonsi likes to play Sky too. There's so many options, I don't know what Vonsi Jason will also pick. likes to just pull out random things at yeah. times oh it so seems, it's gonna be it a is cp gonna be... Gla actually weapon glaive or cp glaive or cp idris hmm i think cp idris and weapon glaive here is that i would love to see cp idris and weapon glaive i don't think we've seen anywhere near enough cp idris we've only seen i think once or twice if mm -hmm. at all and cp idris is super super strong it's actually one of the stronger laners in the game right now if you just are patient with it and that's one of the keys is just being able to just farm up best chuck is one of the best farmers at the moment so i think it could really work for them yeah he definitely showed that last game as well, well 15 seconds left for gang stars to yeah finish they got this comp. potentially cp blackfeather xeno has played it so well so he may be leaning towards that or samuel here um there's also grump job i don't want them to play a cp grump job because i don't think that's gonna be very good but yeah he's gonna go with the cp blackfeather here yep his comfort pick. All right, so a lot of poke on the side of gang stars and a lot of damage to follow up on engage from Grace. How are we feeling about the compositions there? No, no memory coming out from TSM. They've actually picked a pretty meta composition on this one. Yeah, and I mean, when they go meta, it's uh, probably even scarier than when they. I would hope so. Of, <laughs> I, I mean, hope so. the the crawl pick was pretty scary. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. I mean, what are your thoughts on the on the composition? This is a much better draft for Gangstars because they banned Baron. So um, I can, I think this game can go either way. Once Gangstars reaches level eight on Blackfeather, they do outrange. So TSN these have some very smart dives, but it's honestly a pretty even draft. So it could go either way. Okay, we do have a couple of highlights as well of Araki Zoro on this Kestrel. It's very likely to be going to that lane, and you know he had a lot of success this season on specifically this Kestrel. And this is actually highlights from them against TSM as well. Yeah, and again, this was the one game Gangstars did win against TSM was with the weapon Kestrel. So it's a pick that they're very comfortable on. They're able to make work because they know TSM likes to engage very heavily. Kestrel is very strong against teams that are trying to engage and jump onto you. And that was exactly how they were able to win that game was just let TSM come onto them, counter engage with the Kestrel, and yeah. then able to find team fights that way. So final question then before we jump on into this game. Can Gangstars turn this into a three-game series? Can they come back in this series, Sweet Jay? If Vayne's play Grace really well, then yes. So I think I'm going to go for Gangstars this, this game. Believe in Gangstars? I think they can. I don't think they will. I think this one's <laughs> going to go TSM. All right, we have a split desk on this one. Let us know who you are going for. Hashtag Vainglory as ever. Are you a Gangstars fan or are you following the likes of TSM? Let us know on social. But it's time to head on into this game. We've got an Idris Dowsy, so please take it away. Thank you very much, and I actually had Best Chuck drop into my stream earlier this week to uh, prepare me for his Idris. He said, Dalsy, I love you, man, but get ready, because my Idris is about to rock your world. So I'm ready. I'm ready, Best Chuck. Show me what you got. Wow, the name drop there, Dalsy. Just had to drop the names in, hey? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like dropping the name of the players we're commentating when it comes to being casters and an analyst and you you meant to be talking to these guys maybe it's not a big deal but yeah you know what best chuck and i we go way back i remember when him when he was just a baby i don't know if you heard but i actually had the real dowsy tv in my stream the other day <laughs> that's pretty good all right excoundrel talk to me because we've got some pretty interesting starting compositions here best chuck on this uh, Idris, it's likely to be a CP Idris, considering yeah. Von C's building towards the weapon power. Yeah, it looks like Von C's definitely committing to a weapon power route here. He's gone for the Swift Shooter. If you were going to go a Tension Bar Aftershock route, you generally start double weapon blade. Uh, I know that the Swift Shooter does give you a bit of extra training potential. It helps you clear slightly quickly because of the attack speed. He's actually going to get onto Xenotech early here. 
Can they find the kill? It certainly looks like it'll be an easy one for Von C, and it is first blood to the man himself as he takes Xenotech down. And Xenotech playing this CP Black Feather. His Black Feather was excound excounding. I was going to say scoundrel. It was a fantastic scoundrel back in uh, the spring season. It was weapon power back then. It wasn't CP. I do wonder if uh, if you play an amazing weapon power Black Feather, does that automatically translate to you playing amazing? CP Blackfella. I think they actually have incredibly, just like you would know with Idris, they have very different play styles, in my honest opinion. Weapon Power Blackfeather is a, is a little bit more about sticking to your target, knowing when to use your ultimate to dodge CC, knowing when to follow up and find those executing blows. With CP, it, CP Blackfeather, if I'm perfectly honest, it's about whether you can hit your on point. Like, that's pretty much 60 to 70 percent of CB Blackfeather. The rest of it is then using those broken mid stacks to good effect in a team fight, and then obviously trying to find those executes. But the majority of CB Blackfeather is: can you land your on point? Can you stack your broken mid? Because uh, generally you see CP Blackfeathers go shatter glass broken mid, and, and then sometimes maybe extend to a clockwork because they want to get the lower cooldown on their on point because that's such an important ability for CP Blackfeather. But yeah. Um, they, they play quite differently and also has a bit of a, a, a more stressful time in the early jungle, just a bit like um, you would expect, to be honest. Weapon Power Black Feather just a bit better at trading in early jungle. Apparently, it is as Von C trading in the jungle with Veins. Xenotech has left the area trying to secure his healing treant at the front of the jungle, but Von C's coming in. Von C steals it. Von C steals away Xenotech's life. That is a harsh time there. Xenotech. Definitely a carry threat for Gangstars, has been for some time, and TSM shutting him down from the get-go. I mean, Vonsi able to be consistently aggressive here, absolutely dominant. And this is kind of what I like about picking the Weapon Power Glaive here, because you pick Weapon Power Glaive, if you pick CP Glaive, you don't have that potential to do those kind of trades in the jungle early on. You can't be dominant. You can't be um, wandering into the enemy jungle and, and taking trade to the enemy jungle at 24-7 because you don't have that trade potential. But Von C on the Weapon Power Glaive, you can just walk up to the enemy hero. You can after burn them, hit them a couple of times with your axe, and suddenly they're on the floor. And CP Blackfeather, like we said, does have a bit of a tough time in the early jungle. You like to keep your range as CP Blackfeather, and Von C will be able to close that range very effectively. It's a lot harder, in my opinion, to hit your on point at point blank range because of the angles of error become much larger. And therefore, Xenotech will be having a tough time if Von C sticks to him, you know, and he dodges around. Um, Xenotech where he can, Xenotech will have a bit of a tougher time trying to trade with Vonsi. He might be able to get this, but Vonsi should be able to deny. No. Yeah, Vonsi secures that fairly easy. And let's talk about the knock-on effect that this is actually having on the map, because Best Chuck, he's moving to the jungle. He's going to pick himself up some crystal bits, sold his Book of Eulogies very quickly. So, Heavy Prism, Eclipse Prism, double crystal bit. He's unlocked his Divergent Paths now in four and a half minutes. And actually, because Von C has been so aggressive in the jungle. Best Chuck is having the time of his life. CP Idris very vulnerable in the first six to eight minutes of the game. It scoundrel can be uh, put behind his uh, his major item spike, um, three items essentially on uh, the CP Idris, and and if you can delay that, then it allows you more wiggle room to win the game against him. Best Chuck at the moment, he's not feel threatened whatsoever because Von C has been inside of Xenotech's jungle and instead of Xenotech being able to put pressure on to Best Chuck, it's Xenotech dying to the hands of Von C. Yeah, and also it's drawn Veins away from the lane. Veins has had to be consistently looking to make things happen to protect Xenotech in the jungle against Von C. And that's meant that for the most part, Best Chuck has been had an untested laning phase. Now, there is one item in the game that basically nullifies range mismatches in lane, it nullifies poor matchups in lane, and that is Book of Eulogies. Book of Eulogies is single-handedly one of the most important items in the game at nullifying poor lane matchups. The only way you punish a Book of Eulogies in the lane if you have a bad matchup is by having captain pressure and looking to consistently gank or put pressure on that laner. Because of the pressure that Von C has had in the jungle, he's drawn veins away from the lane. It's been a Kestrel versus an Idris, and an Idris has got Book of Eulogies. So Idris is going to feel very untested versus the Kestrel if you can just hide behind the minion wave to uh, soak those glimmer shots. And it's not CP Kestrel, so the splash damage isn't doing any work. I mean, it's a very easy laning phase for Best Chuck. And it's a CP Idris Dowsi, as you'll know, you couldn't ask for anything better. Certainly, and he's gone down this slightly more expensive route early of the Shadow Glass, which means his Chakrams will hit a punish, will really punish. 
Now he can transition this into a Broken Myth, and he'll have a much quicker item spike because he's been allowed to get to the Shadow Glass. He can now build towards the Broken Myth, and you feel like he's just going to hit like a truck when that happens. He can then go for his alternating current third item. That's going to add to his damage output. Frostburn as his last item, or Eve of Harvest, if we get that Firex Scoundrel. And TSM are right on the way to, to winning because currently it feels CP Idris is the strongest late game carry in the game. Yeah, very, very strong. They're going to put pressure on, but that's an immediate active camo coming out from Meraki. But all that was used was the sigil to get the speed up there. Uh, nothing else really burned for TSM. Yeah, I really, really like CP Idris. Um, if you're really consistently good at getting those chakrams down, it's incredibly good into a double range that doesn't really have the priority of building much um, defensive itemization because neither Iraqi nor Zenithic are going to consider too much shielding. But speaking of that, Iraqi's actually got a light shield in his inventory because I think he is realizing that with Bestia getting so far ahead and going for a shatter glass, he's going to need to be able to negate some of that damage. And that's what he's done here, Dalsy. He's saying, okay, I, I realize if I get hit by a chakram, I'm pretty much dead, therefore I need the shielding to be able to protect me at least 20% of this damage. I think um, Light Shield sort of reduces 20 to 25% worth of damage, so he, he realizes how important this is. But, you know, against the Black Feather, even post level 8, CP Idris Chakram range is really, really strong. On C, under the turret, stunned. He will to dodge away from that after camera. Best Chuck will get popped by it. Lyra, able to heal up. Flash X will be happy doing that for some time. Look at those Chakrams though, onto Xenotech, he's dead! And that's going to be Von C going very low. He will fall as well. The junglers do trade lives. But that's the Chakram tearing through Xenotech's health with the burst damage potential of a Glaive. TSM will blow up anyone that they catch off guard. If they get knocked against the wall by a Afterburn and the Chakram rips through their corpse, well, that will be it. Just a corpse for them. That was grim. There, Darcy. Nice bit of imagery that you uh, gave everybody in Twitch chat. Um, I actually just want to point out that, that Chuck's placement of that Chakram and timing of that Chakram was impeccable. One of the best, sort of, I guess, almost the, the dream scenarios for a CP Idris is to have everybody line up and just take the full Chakram to the face. There, Xenotech made the mistake of following up on veins in the choke point, and all best Chuck had to do, it was like slotting a USB stick into a USB drive, it was straight <laughs> down the middle. Abs abs no, it's not. Absolutely no way he could miss. Just through the chakra and through that choke point in the mustache brush, got maximum value. And again, very, very good against the likes of CP Blackfeather because he doesn't really think about itemization in terms of defense. Yeah, uh, maybe you're uh, you're better at USB slots than I am at Scoundrel. I always find that when I plug it in, it's the wrong way around, and then I have to take it out again. Then I turn it around, it doesn't go in. I turn it around again, it turns out it was the right way the whole time. So, yeah, uh, maybe I'm just bad at USB slots. But you're right, was, and with the Broken Myth now built like. with the Shattered Glass as well at Scoundrel, that Chakram will build him easily five stacks straight off the bat. And then alternating current being picked up as his next item. He's very close to picking it up, only a couple of hundred gold. Look at that, Xenotech dives in, Veins almost loses his life, Best Chuck in a bit of trouble, actually gets blown up by the Kestrel. This is a mistake here from TSM. They did not respect the damage onto the, uh, the Idris. He needs to be peeled, cannot leave him to uh, to deal with a Black Clover by himself. They did get the turret though, Dowsy, so it is a, tar a turret trade and get... for just a... Oh, wait a second. Did they get anything else? Fonsi's low on energy, they're gonna charge forward. Kestrel's waiting in the wings, just farming up this uh, this treant. They look, could look to turn. I think the Glimmer Shot will just tell TSM not to try. I actually like what Gangstars are doing here, by the way, Dalsy. They are fighting fire with fire. Now, this is the general Kestrel build that we often see on Kestrels these days, but it, it, it's pretty much the Glimmer Shot focused build. And that's essentially saying, I see you've got range with the, the, the Chakram. I see it's obviously going to hurt a lot with the CP interest build. We are going to play the game of let's hit you harder, but with two different sources. So they're going to have the level eight on point from Xenotech now, but they're also going to have this incredibly hard hitting um, glimmer shot build coming out from the Kestrel. And that makes means that TSM might be stuck in an awkward position where they are relying on Best Chuck NA to do the damage from afar. But if he misses, it's a prime opportunity because let's be honest, you spam your abilities a lot more and a lot more frequently with the Gangstars lineup than you do. Chakram has to be placed perfectly to have the impact, whereas, you know, Iraqi Zoro can probably throw out four Glimmer Shots, and if one of them hits, you probably call it a success. 
So TSM might be in a, in a tough position, but one of the best ways to deal with Poke is having a Lyra because she just heals everybody up so frequently. So, you know, it, it, TSM do have the ways to remedy some of the things the gangsters are throwing their way. And I would argue that planting yourself at Scoundrel to throw a Glimmer Shot opens yourself up for that Chakram to hit you. And like you mentioned, one Chakram will near about take Araki Zoro's life. A Fountain, a Grace Hill most likely will have to be expended after that because you will notice Von C flying at your weapon power Kestrel's face as soon as that happens. So it is definitely fire with fire here at Scoundrel. Sometimes fire wins and we'll have to see if that could be the case for Gangstars as TSM start their siege. You know, Tech now at this point where he's so close to the Broken Myth, so, so very close. Baines goes in for an engage, but good roll back from Best Chuck repositions him, make sure he gets a little bit of damage. Up to three Broken Myth stacks. You can maintain them pretty quick, easily with uh, with the Idris. Your alternating current now built, your auto attacks are going to keep that Broken Myth stack nice and mm. nice and present. They're looking for a gank here. Baines going to face check straight into Von C, and that's going to be Baines just I deleted. I don't know, Bane, the second time Baines has done that this this series, I, I he, where did you expect TSM to be? Like, did you did you just not think that they would be right in the brush next to the turret they're trying to siege? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't well, look at the sc sc scout traps on map as well. There's one that TSM are about to walk over here. That's been there for a little bit. So, you know they didn't exit that route. Right? There's one in the tri bush. So, so where they're not at your crystal sentry. <laughs> Exactly. Where would TSM have gone? Like, I don't know. I think that was the second time Baines has done that. I didn't. I didn't see if he had flares in his inventory that time around. I don't think he did. But was let, let's okay. Let, let me rephrase this. Was there any need for Baines to face check that brush? What What did Baines gain by face checking that brush? A one on his scoreboard. Yeah, exactly. He, he might have been thinking maybe I can get a scout trap down here. But what What did you actually gain by making that decision? That was a decision that literally netted your team nothing and potentially lost you everything. The only thing it did give you was potentially vision of, of Glaive trying to make a afterburn play when Iraqi Zoro had backed. Mm. But, you know, that's that's I would say that's at least a good oh, reason no. so close to the turret. Look at this engage straight onto the Kestrel. She is dead for all rights. Bane's going to heal Xenotech. Not that he's taken too much damage. Von C puts the pressure on and Best Chuck's just taking out Bane's on the back line. Up to six broken myth stacks, up to seven. Bane's about to lose his life as Best Chuck gets into position. Needs to just charge forward. Von C looking for the kill onto Xenotech and he'll have it. Can Best Chuck get the grace? No, never chase a grace. Pretty much a fool's errant, but this Crystal Sentry will be the side of TSM. They've got a huge gold lead at this point. They've got a crazy gold lead. When you get CP Idris to three damage items this early at Scoundrel, there's almost no way to lose the game. Unless your CP Idris is me and, and, and likes to throw, then it, there's almost no way to lose this game. And when it's best Chuck, he's been so consistent this entire season. In fact, the entirety of the roster of TSM have been consistent. Flash X talked about retiring on his Instagram at the beginning of the season. He's looked like he's having out, like the best performances of his current yeah. career right now, or at least his In most recent career. TSM are such a great team right now. I, I have never seen Flash X look better, personally. I think Flash X has only improved and improved. I think there is, there is he's such a talent for the, 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 the TSM team and proving that, you know, Older guys like me can actually function in the game at a competitive level, and, and I know I think I'm actually older than Flushing, but really, you know, he's one of the older players. I think he's actually players, older than you, X Scoundrel. I is believe he? he's uh, a year or a bit. Okay, well, Flash X proving that even old people like me, and I'm not even that old, can function incredibly well in the Vainglory scene. So, I mean, I, I actually love him for that specific reason. And he's obviously, I, you know, without a doubt, one of the best captains in North America, not only tactically, but also in terms of decision making. I don't like what Vaynes is doing here, by the way. Um, the Gangstar plan for me should be just engaged. So keep you keep at range and spam your on point and spam your glimmer shot. I don't think you should ever be looking to engage with the uh, with the Grace. Oh, well, they're going to get engaged upon. Xenotech takes a lot of damage. Veins, oh, he's not able to block that. That's going to be Araki's are in a lot of trouble. Veins gets taken down as he channels the heal, and that will be Araki dropped as well. Xenotech escapes to tell the tale, but the Crystal Sentry will not excoundrel. These fights starting to become a bit more of a formality, unfortunately, for Gangstars, as they're just not finding any success with their composition. No, but the thing is that Von C snowballed the early game so well for TSM that I, not there wasn't really much the Gangstars could hope to achieve. I think one of the main win conditions of Gangstars is the fact that if you can keep your range, do dodge the Chakrams, and then be able to try and peel back with the Holy Nova when necessary if TSM try and make an engage on you, 
then you actually have good tools to win team fights from range. But every time I see Gangstars make a move towards TSM, Veins uses his Benediction and then gets himself into the fight. I don't think that's the way Gangstars want to play it because I've always talked about it like this. If you have an engage composition, like a, a Lyra and a Glaive together, you can see that's a really good form of engage for TSM. If you actually, with the double ranged, are the one jumping into the team fights, you are doing TSM's job for them. It's the way I always describe this. If you if you engage on an engage comp, you are doing their job for them. And that's what I think Gangsters have been doing a lot of the time here. And TSM have been executing so well. When Gangsters have looked to retreat and they've been out of position, Flash X has just pulled the trigger, Dowsy, every single time. Yeah, they certainly have. It's pretty insane stuff from TSM as they have taken this crack and taken the choke point turret now, looking to take the series against Gangstars. I love the Gangstars roster. I think they have such great potential here in North America, but their games against TSM have just looked, you know, something different to what we've seen from them at London. That was a pretty troll portal from Flash X. They know the game's over. There's going to be this main crystal dropped as Araki Zoro watches from the sidelines. TSM with a 2-0 and currently looking like perhaps the best team in the world. Let's be perfectly honest, Dalsi. What team has looked good against TSM? No one. I, I, I want to say that the best performance I've seen against TSM was Nova, which was yeah, probably I, the most sh shocking it, it, out exactly. of all the people we've seen. I'm going to wrap this up really quickly, Dalsi. Personally, in my honest opinion, when you have a double ranged composition, you should you should be either having a front line that can soak damage for days and wants to engage, or you don't engage at all. Grace does not soak damage for days. She actually has one of the lowest base healths of captains ever. So, she, once the Holy Shield's down on her, she's just as squishy as pretty much anyone else. So, I don't like when you engage with the Grace with the double ranged. No, perhaps a Finn would have been better. Either way, TSM are through to day two here in the North American VG8. Now, looking for their, is it fourth win in a row? I believe it must be. Over to you guys on the desk. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, another comfortable win coming through for Team Solo Mid, and I feel like that's kind of the norm now at this stage. That is the expectation coming into the Vainglory 8 for North America, that TSM just run away with this series. Yeah, I mean, this is looking so, so good. I I don't know who is going to be able to stop them. You know, Cloud9, we thought was going to